long. Of course, like everyone, I take a picture with my phone or with my camera here at my desk. Yeah. Uh, when I'm done, I scan my images if they're below, you know, the size that will fit on my scanner, you know, eight and a half by 11 or smaller. I think it's even bigger than that, but eight and a half by 11 and smaller definitely fits in, it's kind of nine by 12. Mm -hmm. And I scan the images and then um, actually I can just show you guys um, since I have my desk pop up here for you guys to see if if I hit my scanner and I have an Epson scanner an Epson scanner printer I love them I think they're great where's my scanner mm, this might be the other oh this is no nah, I don't like this <laughs> hang on one second Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put that down. Where's my other little icon for a scanner? Uh, sometimes my scanner thing disappears. It, it's been a in person scan. Epson scan. There we go. I'll just show you the settings that I use. Okay. And this is really kind of meh. Um, I have it set on this professional mode and current setting, whatever. Set it to reflective or set it as I am. Some of the, some of the scanners, they say, are you scanning a document or a photo? A photo would be reflective. So photo, you're putting the source on the scanner glass. You're, you want it to be a photo. Okay, and reflective is important because the wax is shiny. Um, do the 24 bit color. And then do as high DPI I don't know why it's on 800. That makes a huge file, but like definitely 300 or more. And then document size. Then when I go to configure this, I want it to actually, I'm going to hit scan because it's, it looks weird. Okay. I want it to come out as a JPEG. Don't make it come out as a PDF. Make it come out as a photo. And then you can send it to location picture file. The last thing that I scanned was my beach fox. You can edit the name here. Um, but yes, you want it as though you're scanning a reflective photo and you want it to come out as a JPEG. So that's that's the what I want you to know. Then it goes to my picture file. So let's find the beach fox since that was the last thing I scanned. There it is. It's a huge file, 13.2 megabytes. Um, and what I do with that is then I open it up with Photoshop if you have it. Open with, where's my open with? Open with, open with. Oh, I saw it. Open with, and I'm choosing Photoshop. Which always takes a minute to open. If you have Photoshop, this is a great thing to have. Because there are a couple of things I will do with that scan when I open it. First of all, I'll probably crop it first before I put it in here. I hate cropping in Photoshop, but don't worry about that. If there are any little edges or anything. So why did it do that? I wanted my other thing. I don't want this. Okay, here it is. And here are the adjustments I'll make. I'll go into image adjustments. And I'll look at, I'll put the original next to me and I'll make sure that the brightness and contrast 
not a huge amount, maybe five degrees, 10 at the most, matches the original. If it needed to be brighter or darker for some reason, I can't see why anybody would make it darker. But I'll make, usually the contrast, that increases the light and the dark because it's increasing contrast. I might pull that up like about five points. You can see the points right here. If the color is off, go to adjustments. And isn't this great? You'll have this all recorded for you. And then I'll go to like color balance. And you can play with it a little. Like, do I need it more orangey? So I'll put a little more yellow in, put a little more red in, and do that kind of thing. And get the color balance so it matches the original. I don't want to change the original. I just want it to match my piece of art. I'm canceling. Um, I do play with um, there was one where I played with the vibrance. Vibrance can get it for saturation. You probably don't want to do. You may want to tone down some saturation, but you want it to look as much like your I usually just do the color balance and the and the contrast and make sure that either it didn't overdo my blacks or that they are dark enough or whatever and that it looks right. Then I go to image size, image size. And all of this is like, oh my gosh, all this pixels and what size. Just here under original size, pick like five by seven or eight by 10 at 300 dpi and that should make it the right size for any um you know to use for anything 300 dots per inch and eight by ten or five by seven um whatever's closer to the original size if uh, for instance somebody gives you it must be 1000 pixels on the widest side right so the tallest side i can put in 1000 whoops that's 10000 and then do um okay and then do pixels pixels at They don't want it more than 1,000 pixels wide. That would be really small. But anyway, you can choose that and it'll it'll adjust everything else around it. But I usually just go to, okay, I want it eight by 10 at that. Okay, then there's a one last thing. And I found that on some pictures because when we look up close at our color pencil, um, sometimes we get a little more paper showing through than we want. And I had one problem with that where the light was bouncing off of it a little bit. And and so I'm canceling all of that. I'm not changing this picture at all. You can go into filter and noise and then dust and scratches. And then don't pick a radius larger than three. I usually do two or three. And there's a preview. It blurred them just slightly from what we saw before so that we don't have a bunch of, oh, it looks like I was sloppy and didn't cover the paper. It isn't that, it's just that when the scan happened, the light bounced against any of the little spots in there and they can get a little distracting in the image. You don't have to do any of this at all. I know a lot of people who just scan it, it's fine, leave it alone. But it does for small pieces of color pencil. You don't have to worry about lighting. And do I have to take it on an overcast day outside with, you know, some kind of, you know, mostly phones are good enough. But sometimes I find my phone made all these adjustments. And I'm doing a portrait of my daughter in a drawing. And it thinks it's taking a picture of a portrait. And it makes its own adjustments and then it's not right. So scanning is actually very, very, very accurate. And then always when you save, do a save as, 
so that in case, and then rename it, so that in case I usually do, okay, since it was Beach Fox something or other, I'll do Beach Fox PS because I did a Photoshop on it. So that if I see it later and post it on Facebook or something, and I go, oops, I really messed it up. I made it too orangey. Um, I, I still have the original scan. Don't change the original scan. Just do a save as. And it will tell you something or other. I'm going to pretend I'm saving it somewhere. Save it there. Okay. I'll pretend. It'll do this box will come up and it'll say do you want this high quality maximum quality and you just click okay don't worry about all this baseline and progressive i don't know what they are we don't need them so that's how you can scan and um if you have a scanner i mean all the little epson scanners i've had and i don't think i've spent more than a hundred dollars on any of them they have been wonderful and HPs are good, you know, just whatever you have in the house. If you have a scanner, there you go. All right. That was one thing. Now, the other thing was, I don't know if 